the Bible, and the Catechism, in a year. Day 9 From the Book of Genesis The Call of Abram Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who curses you I will curse, and by you all the families of the earth shall bless themselves. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was seventy-five years old when he departed from Haran. And Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their possessions which they had gathered, and the persons that they had gotten in Haran, and they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the yoke of Moreh. At that time the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram, and said, To your descendants I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. Thence he removed to the mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, with Bethel on the west and I on the east, and there he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on, still going toward the Negev. Abram and Sarai in Egypt Now there was a famine in the land. So Abram went down to Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was severe in the land. When he was about to enter Egypt, he said to Sarai his wife, I know that you are a woman beautiful to behold, and when the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife, then they will kill me, but they will let you live. Say you are my sister, that it may go well with me because of you, and that my life may be spared on your account. When Abram entered Egypt the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful. And when the princes of Pharaoh saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. And for her sake he dealt well with Abram. And he had sheep, oxen, he asses, men servants, maid servants, she asses, and camels. But the Lord afflicted Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. So Pharaoh called Abram, and said, What is this you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say, She is my sister, so that I took her for my wife? Now then, here is your wife, take her, and be gone. And Pharaoh gave men orders concerning him, and they set him on the way, with his wife and all that he had. Abram and Lot separate. So Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot with him, into the Negev. Now Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver and in gold. And he journeyed on from the Negev as far as Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, to the place where he had made an altar at the first, and there Abram called on the name of the Lord. And Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents, so that the land could not support both of them dwelling together, for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together, and there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. At that time the Canaanites and the Perizzites dwelt in the land. Then Abram said to Lot, Let there be no strife between you and me, and between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, for we are kinsmen. Is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself from me. If you take the left hand, then I will go to the right, or if you take the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes, and saw that the Jordan Valley was well watered everywhere like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, in the direction of Zoar, this was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So Lot chose for himself all the Jordan Valley, and Lot journeyed east, thus they separated from each other. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, while Lot dwelt among the cities of the valley and moved his tent as far as Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were wicked, great sinners against the Lord. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, Lift up your eyes, and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward, for all the land which you see I will give to you and to your descendants forever. I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if one can count the dust of the earth, your descendants also can be counted. Arise, walk through the length and the breadth of the land, for I will give it to you. So Abram moved his tent, and came and dwelt by the oaks of Mamre, which are at Hebron, and there he built an altar to the Lord. From the Book of Psalms 
God's power and justice. To the choir master, according to Muthlavin. A Psalm of David. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will tell of all thy wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O Most High. When my enemies turned back, they stumbled and perished before thee. For thou hast maintained my just cause. Thou hast sat on the throne giving righteous judgment. Thou hast rebuked the nations, thou hast destroyed the wicked. Thou hast blotted out their name for ever and ever. The enemy have vanished in everlasting ruins. Their cities thou hast rooted out. The very memory of them has perished. But the Lord sits enthroned for ever. He has established His throne for judgment. And He judges the world with righteousness. He judges the peoples with equity. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed. A stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know Thy name put their trust in Thee. For Thou, O Lord, hast not forsaken those who seek Thee. Sing praises to the Lord, who dwells in Zion. Tell among the peoples His deeds. For He who avenges blood is mindful of them. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. Be gracious to me, O Lord. Behold what I suffer from those who hate me. O Thou who liftest me up from the gates of death. That I may recount all Thy praises. That in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I may rejoice in Thy deliverance. The nations have sunk in the pit which they made. In the net which they hid as their own foot been caught. The Lord has made Himself known, He has executed judgment. The wicked are snared in the work of their own hands. Haggaiah. Selah. The wicked shall depart to Sheol. All the nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. And the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord. Let not man prevail. Let the nations be judged before Thee. Put them in fear, O Lord. Let the nations know that they are but men. Selah. From the Gospel of Matthew Concerning Treasures Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The Sound Eye The eye is the lamp of the body. So, if your eye is sound, your whole body will be full of light, but if your eye is not sound, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness! Serving Two Masters No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Do not worry. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor about your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you by being anxious can add one cubit to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O men of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be yours as well. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Let the day's own trouble be sufficient for the day. From the Catechism 
The Stages of Revelation In the beginning God makes Himself known. God, who creates and conserves all things by His Word, provides men with constant evidence of Himself in created realities. And furthermore, wishing to open up the way to heavenly salvation, He manifested Himself to our first parents from the very beginning. He invited them to intimate communion with Himself and clothed them with resplendent grace and justice. This revelation was not broken off by our first parents' sin. After the fall, God, buoyed them up with the hope of salvation, by promising redemption, and He has never ceased to show His solicitude for the human race. For He wishes to give eternal life to all those who seek salvation by patience and well-doing. Even when He disobeyed you and lost your friendship you did not abandon Him to the power of death. Again and again you offered a covenant to man. The Covenant with Noah After the unity of the human race was shattered by sin God at once sought to save humanity part by part. The covenant with Noah after the flood gives expression to the principle of the divine economy toward the nations, in other words, towards men grouped in their lands, each with, its, own language, by their families, in their nations. This state of division into many nations is at once cosmic, social and religious. It is intended to limit the pride of fallen humanity united only in its perverse ambition to forge its own unity as at Babel. But, because of sin, both polytheism and the idolatry of the nation and of its rulers constantly threaten this provisional economy with the perversion of paganism. The covenant with Noah remains in force during the times of the Gentiles, until the universal proclamation of the Gospel. The Bible venerates several great figures among the Gentiles, Abel the Just, the king-priest Melchizedek, a figure of Christ, and the upright Noah, Daniel, and Job. Scripture thus expresses the heights of sanctity that can be reached by those who live according to the covenant of Noah, waiting for Christ to gather into one the children of God who are scattered abroad. God chooses Abraham. In order to gather together scattered humanity God calls Abram from his country, his kindred and his father's house, and makes him Abraham, that is, the father of a multitude of nations. In you all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. The people descended from Abraham would be the trustee of the promise made to the patriarchs, the chosen people, called to prepare for that day when God would gather all his children into the unity of the church. They would be the root onto which the Gentiles would be grafted, once they came to believe. The patriarchs, Prophets and certain other Old Testament figures have been and always will be honored as saints in all the Church's liturgical traditions. God forms His people Israel. After the patriarchs, God formed Israel as His people by freeing them from slavery in Egypt. He established with them the covenant of Mount Sinai and, through Moses, gave them his law so that they would recognize him and serve him as the one living and true God, the provident father and just judge, and so that they would look for the promised Savior. Israel is the priestly people of God, called by the name of the Lord, and the first to hear the word of God, the people of elder brethren and the faith of Abraham. Through the prophets, God forms his people in the hope of salvation, in the expectation of a new and everlasting covenant intended for all, to be written on their hearts. The prophets proclaim a radical redemption of the people of God, purification from all their infidelities, a salvation which will include all the nations. Above all, the poor and humble of the Lord will bear this hope. Such holy women as Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, Miriam, Deborah, Hannah, Judith and Esther kept alive the hope of Israel's salvation. The purest figure among them is Mary.